Welcome to our first English town hall call. My name is Christian and I'm leading digital business at Berlin Partner for Business and Technology. The last two weeks, we did already several sessions in German concerning loans, grants, guarantees, and topics like short term work. We got so much positive feedback for our transparent communication, but honestly, as an international hub like Berlin wants to be, or hopefully it is, where people are living and working from all over, all over the world together, we have to meet this challenge. We can act for Berlin worldwide for national talents without offering such a session. That's why I decided to do it in English, not in German, and hopefully everybody um, can take something for her for his after uh, this call. I'm very happy to hand over to Caroline. We we'll moderate the session. Um, please take care, stay healthy, and thank you very much for joining our call. Caroline. Thank you very much, Christian. As you already mentioned, my name is Caroline Erdmann, and I'm also with Berlin Partner, where I'm responsible for all startup, startup activities. And today I will moderate this call together with my colleague, Karina Tu. She will, in parallel, facilitate the live chat. That means if you are joining this call via app or the web version, you can ask your questions via the chat function and we will cluster the questions and try to answer them at the end of this call. So please direct your questions only at Karina too. Today we have prepared two main topics for you. The first one is all about financing options due to the current crisis. And for this, we have invited several experts. The first one is Alexandra Graf Valna. She is a project manager for funding and financing at Berlin Partner. We also invited Raphael Kuber. He's the head of customer service DISDEF at the investment bank Berlin. And we also invited Dr. Matthias von Bismarck Osten. He's the authorized representative at the investment bank Berlin. The second topic is all about legal issues like short time work or rent payments. And here we invited again, Dr. Müller Borutau. He's an attorney at law and a licensed labor law specialist at Biden Burkhardt. And just one more thing before we get started, this call will be recorded and from tomorrow on, you can listen to it again via our Berlin Partner YouTube channel. So let's start with financial support. Dear Alexandra, if a company has liquidity problems, the first step would be to contact the local bank. Is that correct? Hello everyone, first of all, also from my side. And yes, uh, Caroline, you're right. Uh, it's always a good idea to talk to your house bank or the financing partner where you have your business account to f at first, because there you could ask for um, an, an increase in the credit volume or if they allow for a grace period so that you only have to pay your interest rates and not the loan amount. And the big advantage is that the bank already knows you and can act quite quickly if they can, yeah. Mm -hmm. Here in Berlin, we have many startups. And as we all know, many startups are not bankable at this stage of their development as they do not bring enough collateral with them. And here comes the guarantee bank into play. Can you explain what that actually is? Yes, in Germany, there is the possibility for freelancers and companies of using a guarantee from a guarantee bank to lower the house bank credit default risk. So perhaps just to make that clear. So, even so what does the default guarantee actually mean? Um, okay, so first of all, Ed, so in the default guarantee means that if your collateral or that of your company is insufficient and you are ultimately unable to repay and cover your loan, the house bank can approach the guarantee bank to uh, pay the loan. And in case of the so-called default guarantee, the guarantor is only made liable if all attempts by the creditor to cover the outstanding funds from the borrower have failed. So it's, it, it is, um, it's not the same as um, uh, 
um, a, a directly enforceable guarantee. In the case of a directly enforceable guarantee, the guarantor must immediately step into the breach. Yeah, mm -hmm. but um, perhaps, um, uh, yeah, um, uh, um, so I guess what I was saying was that it's even it's a called a bank, just to make that clear, uh, a company cannot get any money out of the Bank. We can only get a guarantee for, for your house bank, for your loan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's no direct flow of money. No, um, but the guarantee bank uh, guarantees up to 80% of, uh, of the credit risk. And in the Corona crisis, um, this is even an amount of maximum 2.5 million euros. So quite a big amount. Big amount, okay. And which documents are required for an application? So which documents are required for application can be found on the website of the Guarantee Bank, which I would recommend to check. And perhaps what one of the most important documents is a liquidity plan for the next 12 months. You should always have that for financing and funding options. Okay. And how can I, as a company, find out if I'm eligible for a guarantee? So first of all, you should talk to your house bank and the house bank then will contact the guarantee bank or you can contact the, um, the guarantee bank in Berlin directly via the bank's financial portal, the guarantee bank's financial portal. They have a special portal for that. Okay. And we all know sometimes it actually takes ages to get a guarantee. And here we have the directly enforceable guarantees in Germany. Could you explain what that is? Yes. So um, it always depends on the amount of the guarantee, your business model, the quality of the document, etc. how long uh, it takes that the guarantee bank approves your application and says, okay, I am going to guarantee for you. Um, however, within the so-called uh, Guarantee Express program, the Guarantee Bank can now make decisions on guarantees up to an amount of 250,000 euros independently and within three days. So they do not have to call a guarantee committee to decide on the guarantees. Mm -hmm. And besides the house banks and the normal loans, you have the opportunity to apply for promotional loans like the KW loans. And here I'm talking about the Unternehmerkredit, which is a business loan for bigger companies, and the ERP Gründungskredit, which is a founding loan for younger companies. And most recently, there's a third program, which is called Schnellkreditprogramm, like a fast loan program. Uh, the latter one was just announced today during a press conference. Can you explain us what this Schnellkredit program is all about? Yes, so last Friday, the EU Commission decided, among other things, that promotional loans up to a certain amount may be granted with a 100% liability exemption. Until now, the EU, EU member states have been prohibited from granting such a comprehensive exemption from liability. And as part of the extension of the exemption from liability, the German federal government presented a new credit program at a federal press conference today, as you mentioned. And this express credit program is intended to provide quick liquidity for small and medium-sized enterprises. So please note that so far, only this information from the press conference and no concrete guidelines have been issued. So we will provide you with tangible information as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, what was said on the press conference about the, this, this new program, um, so application must have already been economically active and have made sales and profits in the past year and not have been in difficulties until the end of 2019. And as a rule, applicants should receive three months turnover from 2019 as a credit and the KFW should cover 100% of the risk for loans of up to 500,000 euros if the company employs 11 to 50 people and for larger companies with up to 249 employees, the 100% 100 risk, um, risk assumption should even apply to loans of up to 800,000 euros. And the term will be about 10 years with probably two years of that are redemption free, but 
as we said, no guideline yet, so we don't know. And the interest rate is um, probably 3%. Mm -hmm. Um, the other two programs that we mentioned in the beginning, the Unternehmerkredit and the ERP Gründungskredit, actually have the same requirements, right? Can you, uh, who can actually apply for those loans? Yes, so um, it's basically, basically right. So the conditions are more or less the same, but the target groups are different. So for the um, ERP Gründerkredit, um, companies that have been active on the market for at least three but less than five years are eligible and the target group of the Unternehmerkredit are companies that have been active on the market for at least five years and depending on the program commercial freelancers startups tradesmen small medium-sized companies large companies they are all um, eligible for the funding as long as they are commercial and, 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 and have an intention to generate profit. And as we have, as I assume, a lot of foreigners who are listening right now, um, it's also interesting to ask um, what about EU citizens that are not German or non-EU citizens. So the EU citizens, EU citizens must be treated by the banks as just as German citizens. However, foreigners who do not come from the EU country have a slightly harder time of it. They usually have to present a resistance permit to give the bank security. And what is also very important is that only companies that were not in economic difficulties until the end of 2019 can apply for a loan. Hmm. That is a very good remark because you said companies in difficulties. What does this term actually mean? Does it mean cash flow positive? Um, the cash flow does not necessarily have to be positive. Um, a firm is in difficulty when it is um, unable to cover its losses with its own resources or with funds from other sources. So in a shorter medium term, this would almost certainly drive the company into financial ruin if the state did not intervene. Mm -hmm. So can you tell us a little bit more about the amount of the loans? Yes, so the credit volume for both loans, is, so the Unternehmerkredit and the Gründungskredit, is up to 1 billion euros and the KFW releases the financing partner from up to 90% of the risk. So why is the release from the risk interesting? As already mentioned, promotion loans. Oh, I did not mention that. Perhaps I should tell that too. So if you want to apply for a KFW loan, uh, the loans, you don't go to the KFW and apply for the loan. Your, the loans are always um, applied where your house bank or the financial partner you chose. So this means that the loan application is submitted, checked and completed via your financial partner. So you, have, you don't have a direct contact to the KFW. Mm -hmm. So and also in, this, this means in the end, um, the house bank also has a risk when it approves your loan. And in this case, as I said, the KFW um, takes 90% of the risk, but still the house bank has 10% of the risk. But 10% is not that much so banks are most more yeah more willing to grant a loan hmm. you mentioned already that the remaining 10 percent risk and as we hear from the hotlines and from a lot of startups in berlin right now is that many banks refuse to take on the remaining 10 percent risk so what are the options here for those companies yeah unfortunately this is not uncommon as you said um and as I um, told you earlier, there's the guarantee bank, and I would really um, um, like go to the guarantee bank, ask them for a guarantee. This could really help. Um, but in the end, the house bank bears the risk. So the final decision on granting a loan with your corresponding business model, credit worthiness, collateral, etc., lies within the financing partner you chose. Mm -hmm. And maybe there is also another option coming with the Schnellkreditprogramm that we mentioned in the beginning. Let's see what the guidelines say about that. Exactly. So can you tell us a little bit more about the interest rates and the time period for the loan? 
Yeah, so the interest rate always depends on the development of the capital market and is fixed on the day of the commitment. However, in the context of the Corona crisis, it was reduced to approximately one to two percent. And also here, it's um, important to know that the so-called risk adjusted interest rate system apply applies. This is always the case with promotion loans. So in a nutshell, um, the better the financial situation, respectively the credit worthiness of your company and um, the more valuable the collateral provided, the lower the interest rate. So the credit worthiness is assessed by the house bank and combined with your collateral, there is, this results in a so-called price class and that re represents then the interest rate for your promotional loan. Mm -hmm. And uh, which costs can you cover with these loans? Uh, I'm talking about equipment, labor costs, sales loss, everything can be covered or is there other restrictions? Yeah, exactly. So investments and working capital can be financed with the loan, including rental costs, personal costs, everything you said. What is important is that lost income cannot be compensated with the loan. So the loan serves primarily the um, the, the, the intention to give you liquidity so that you can pay for your operating costs and that you can do the necessary investments. Well, we talked about the distribution of the loan only via the house bank. Which documents do you need to apply for the loan or does this vary from bank to bank? Um, no, there are specific requirements and um, you can find that on the KFW website. Um, however, again, the most important document is a liquidity plan for the next 12 or 18 months. That depends on the size of your company, because this plan determines the loan volume next to uh, your annual turnover in nine, 2019 and your labor cost in 2019. So these three um, numbers, they define how much loan you will get. And can you say anything, something about the processing time and how long it takes to get the first payments to your bank account? Yeah, so this is also, again, a not very concrete answer, I'm sorry. So this depends on the loan amount, uh, the quality of your prepared documents, the business, the bank's willingness to take the risk. As I said, there's still 10% risk that the house bank has. And right now, we have to say that also the extent to which your financing partner can currently work, because banks are, as we are all, severely restricted in their activities by the contact barriers. So this can be a problem. And nevertheless, the KFW wants to act as quickly as possible, and it's already working on, on the loans, and they'll give you the money as, as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks a lot, Alexandra, for all this information. And I think you will stay in this call in case we have questions from our live chat at the end. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. So far, we have talked about the national level. And now I would like to talk about the regional, the Berlin level. Dear Raphael, here in Berlin, we have two programs, the Supportive the One and Supportive the Two. The supportive to one is for companies, but has been stopped last week. Can you tell us how many applications have you already received, processed and transferred so far? Yeah, hello, good evening all together. Um, yeah, according to your first questions um, about the emergency package one, you mentioned right that this program is stopped since um, Saturday the week before and um, so, so far we already received um, one second 1200 um, applications and another 1300 customers got the chance to um, complete their the application until Wednesday if they were not able to to complete it in the past because we had some um, technical issues in our on our um, customer um, IT portal so that's why we we extended that um, that date and people who already started their application can f uh, f uh, fulfill it and send it un uh, until Wednesday so mm -hmm. this is the actual amount of, of um, um, applications we received. Um, another 
interesting uh, number maybe is that um, 200, more than 200 applications are already decided and 70 are um, declined at the moment. So um, this is a process with, which is um, actual full um, in, in our progress. We um, um, build, build the team there, um, with about 123 people who are just doing these kind of applications. And this is uh, something that yeah, uh, started at the, at, at the beginning um, of the Corona crisis in Germany, and um, we are in short time we had that amount of of applications. That's why we had to to close it at the moment. But as um, Alexandra already mentioned, the um, federal government um, opened up a few and other other programs. Um, that's why I think that the federal state of Berlin made us his job and now um, with, together with all the commercial banks um, the, the companies have good other opportunities to um, to um, yeah to overcome that that crisis as we said before the program stopped last week any plans to open it up again uh, no I don't think so because um, the, the the programs from the federal government of Germany um, are now in charge and, and I guess um, the process already started now or will start soon so that I guess um, these kind of uh, liquidity support um, will will be done um, with, uh, with, the, with the commercial banks and the KFW um, and the programs uh, they offer. Mm -hmm. Okay, then let's talk about the Zofortilfe 2, which is for small enterprises, freelancers and self-employed persons. It recently, it recently merged with the grant program from the national level. Can you tell us who can apply for this grant? Yeah, so within this question, it's, it's almost the same um, program we, we offered um, to in the beginning of last week. So um, as, as you mentioned, right, this is now um, a program just with a, with a, um, with a Bundesmittel, so from the German state, and um, yeah, so it doesn't matter what kind of legal entity you have. So all kind of legal entities are are eligible for that program. Um, it's also um, eligible for for foreign citizens without a German passport, um, but then they need to have a registration certificate of of their home address which has to be in Berlin, of course. And um, another important number or, uh, or criteria is the number of employees um, of your company. So if you have less than um, five employees, then you're, you are able to um, to apply for 9,000 euros uh, of grant. And if you have between six and 10 employees, then you can apply for 15,000 euros. Mm -hmm. And can all shareholders or partners of a company apply for the grant? Um, it's the, the the rule is one application for each company. So um, if you have a GmbH with I don't know um, three shareholders, then just one shareholder can apply for this GmbH. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, what can be subsidized, uh, like operating costs, including the labor costs and the founder's salary, or are there any restrictions? Yeah, so this is this is the uh, one big difference between um, the program we've closed on last Wednesday um, and the program we started today is the um, is is the the the, the subsidized costs. So um, you can with a new program you can fund all kind of costs like, for example, your rent, leasing costs, insurance costs for your company. Um, you also can um, pay the salary of your employees but as i mentioned the big difference is that you're not able to um to fund your own costs as a founder or as a single uh, single entrepreneur um, this is the big difference between the the um, grants from the german state and the berlin state that means my founder's salary cannot be paid what about other labor costs from my employees? yeah other labor yeah, as I mentioned, um, the costs for the for the employees um, can be can be funded by this kind of um, subsidy okay. or this grant. Yeah. And do you have to pay taxes on the grant? 
Um, so this is this is a question the tax advisor uh, has to has to answer. Uh, I just can say that um, you have to mention the grant as extraordinary income into your tax in your tax tax, tax declaration, and um, then the tax advisor can tell you the the, the details about that. And uh, which documents do you have to submit to apply to this grant program? Mm -hmm. um, so there are no specific documents you need to upload or something so it's a it's a very very easy uh, process um to prepare yourself you you should make sure that you know what what the com what your company's name is what your tax um id is uh, from the legal representative you need to have your id from your passport and your bank details um, and then you should be able to understand all the declarations which are just mentioned in German language mm -hmm. but there's no there's no there are no documents you, you, you have to upload so let's say you will make an audit of all the applicants afterwards um, is it possible that some people need to pay back the grant yeah so um, the, the process isn't fixed at the moment, but um, what we can say is that um, you should pay back the grant if in a, in a, in a, in a later audit uh, results that your um, existential economic situation was good enough um, to overcome um, that, that crisis, then you should pay back the, the grant. Um, or if you don't need or didn't need the whole amount um, you applied for, then you should pay the, the grant back as well, yeah. Ah, that means if I as a person already know I don't need that much money that I receive from the EBB, I can repay the grant? Yeah, that's true. So we have we um, we have a lot of um, emails answered yet that uh, who really ask us uh, how can I pay back part of the of the grant or, or the whole amount of the grant um, so it's possible to to repay um the the subsidy and you can do that by retransfer um the money to the to the bank account number you got the money from and you just have to write your um um the the, the application id um, which wasn't the usage of your of your um um of your submission of the money and you just have to write this again in the in the usage line and then it's fine and you can repay the grant and, and a lot of people did also already did yes yes already did of course <laughs> so um where can you actually actually apply for the grant at ebb directly yeah exactly so um the only way is if, that you go on our website um look for the for the corona grants then there is um, a link to to uh, an application and here of course you have to wait a bit you are in a in a queue and um you but you also can let yourself send an email and uh, when you when you're in um when it's your turn to to apply for but this is all all, way, all, the, all this is explained uh, on our website and so this is the only way you can apply for the grant go on ibb.de look for the for the link for um to the application and then you have to wait in the queue and then you can f um, fill out your your application form and last week we had some confusion about email confirmation after the submission um did something change yeah we 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 got the the point that the um um, the confirmation on on the web page uh, thank you for your for your um for your application wasn't enough so um we changed the process a little bit and within 24 hours you should get an email confirmation after the submission that um, confirms that your application um, is processed properly in our systems and what is the processing time and when can you actually expect the first payments for this program mm. Yeah, so that process is uh, completely and full auto full automatic. So that means after um, send us your your application form, um, you should receive the money within three bank days. Oh, that's really so it's pretty quick. Yeah. So besides these supportive programs, what happens to already running programs such as the Gründungsbonus, GRW, or Profit? Do these companies need to worry about that? 
no, they don't need to worry about it. So the one important message is that if you applied for one of these programs and you now have to um, have to use one of these um, emergency packages, this has no negative influence on the decision-making process of the other programs. And if you already have an approval um, for these kind of programs, then you should have a look in your in your um, in the, into your company uh, for eligible costs, you can hand in and get a uh, get a payout for these kind of um, already approved um, applications. Okay, thank you very much, Raphael, for sharing your expertise, and we will hear each other again for the live questions. Yeah. I would like to um, deep dive into the startup world now. Last week, we all heard about the news about the 2 billion euros for startups provided by the German government. And right now, of course, everybody wants to know how this money will be distributed. Um, nothing is set in stone yet. We can only speculate here. But uh, Dr. von Bismarck Osten, you are close, very close to the decision-making process on the national level since you are directly involved in this. And from your first-hand experience, how does the plan look like to disseminate these 2 billion euros? I think this, um, well, I'm not an official of the Ministry of Finance, but I'm in contact with them through some personal contacts. And I contacted them two weeks ago as we are, were all worried that the startups are being left out when the support programs of the German government were designed. And, um, but this was fortunately not the case. And um, they had been already in the process of drafting something. But it is not yet finished. So they are still at the drawing board the Ministry of Finance and the Ministry of Economy, but a few things um, could uh, became already clear. Um, one big problem is still the European regulation for state aid that has not been solved yet, but the Commission has already signaled that, um, that, um, that they were working on a temporary framework, somehow waiving or somehow lowering the, the regulatory framework for the state aid. So where does the budget for this fund actually come from? So that is additional money. So they will certainly not cannibalize or, or substitute uh, the, the Zukunft fund. So mm -hmm. the 10 billion Zukunft fund remain in place as a plan in parallel to what will, to the 2 billion they have now earmarked for the startups. Mm -hmm. As we said before, nothing is set in stone yet, but can you say anything already about the structure of the fund, how this could look like? Well, it appears that public and uh, private venture capitalists can apply for a support program in, in case they want to invest in some of their portfolio companies, or even when they want to invest in a new uh, company. And um, it is not yet decided whether the federal state will, do, will, will uh, provide liquidity or liquidity jointly with the risk sharing scheme in form of guarantees. And mm -hmm. um, well, but it appears clear that they want to, that they envisage a 70 versus 30 ratio. So the 30% of the cash or the risk sharing is, will come for, from the private sector venture capital company and the 70% from the public sector and uh, the usual suspects of, uh, of the high-tech Wunderfonds and the KF, KFW Camparion were already mentioned, but we will hope that the venture capital companies of the federal state promotional banks such as EBB BET will also be included of, the, of those institutions which are channeling through these uh, funds uh, from the federal government. Mm -hmm. So just to make it clear, the money would not go directly to the startup, 
but to public finance institutions, like you mentioned, HTGF, Coparion, KFW Capital. That means that the VC and not the startup need to apply for the loan. So which startups could be eligible for this fund? Well, all, all startups which have already received VC. And indeed, so this is a plan. It's not yet decided and it's not my job to announce uh, the plans of the, of the federal government to make that clear, but I received some indications and, uh, and this is what we are talking about to make that clear. So this is not an official announcement, which I'm not supposed to make. And as I said, this is very early in the process. So it appears now that VCs are eligible for, uh, for financing in case they want to invest in their portfolio companies with a view to stabilizing them. And then they apply to one of these companies we, we mentioned, Coparion and so on, and hopefully also EBBBET, <laughs> um, to join them and to take 70% of the stake, either in form of risk, in terms of, in, 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 in term of, of uh, terms of a guarantee, or in terms of a uh, uh, full-fledged equity stake. This is now, this is the direction it takes. Mm -hmm. You mentioned that this model would exclude startups that have not raised any VC money yet. Is that correct? Well, we have no clear cut information on that now, but so I could, I cannot imagine that new venture capital, new uh, targets are systematically kept out. So if, it, it, uh, um, if a company, portfolio company seems eligible for finance and is already in a VC uh, eligible state of affair, I think it should be included. And I think that is the, the, the thinking at the ministry, but I have no clear cut information on that. Mm -hmm. So, it would certainly makes sense, let's put it that way. <laughs> Good. So um, there are a lot of things up to discussion right now. Target sectors, a threshold of investment or a maximum of investment, you name it. Um, but would it only apply to existing investors or would it be open to new investors as well? Did you mention that? It, it should also be open for new investors as well so it is designed so what is important on the on the federal level is that startups are uh, targeted which are already in a somewhat later state of affair so they are have already received vc and um, and so that means that the immediate uh, startup risk of a very early stage. So elaborating on ideas that this startup risk is not hived on to the government now. So it should remain with these friends and family and angels. So that is the perception of it. So if, I, if we see state of affair of the startup would provide some guarantee that this is already uh, there is already a project and and a product which is has probably also been sold to 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 companies and that this is now not the earliest stage mm -hmm. and i i think can imagine that companies uh, which have already achieved the state of affair are not left out when these programs are designed mm -hmm. So you already mentioned the ratio 30 to 70 percent private yes. versus public money. That would mean that 30 percent of the investment would come from a private investor and 70 yes. percent from the public finance institution. Yeah. Would you give us an example for that? So imagine if you see companies wants to invest in one of their portfolio companies, hundred thousand. Euros. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then they would apply 
for <clears throat> the state agency state agencies to provide 70% of that. And the 30% third, are covered by them. So either in terms of liquidity or in terms of just the guarantee. That is not still open. Okay, yeah, fair enough. So do you know anything about the cost that could be covered by this money? Is that somehow restricted? And I, I haven't heard so, and it wouldn't make sense. Okay. Uh, and, and I'm <clears throat> pretty sure that personnel costs uh, will be included because that is the public, this is the announced or advertised goal of this program to maintain a high level of employment in the startup scene because these employees are not only the entrepreneur, but also the entrepreneur, entrepreneurs are the carrier of innovation, which we so uh, urgently need also in, in Germany as a whole. And they will do everything they can to maintain this high level of, of employment. Mm -hmm. That's why I, I would guess that person, the cost of personnel will be included. Okay. Thank you. And of course, there is one very important question for all Berlin-based companies. Do you have any information on the allocation key regards the 16 states in Germany? How much of this 2 billion euros would go to Berlin? Well, that, that is difficult to, this is difficult to guess, but yeah. look where the startups in Germany are. They are mainly in Berlin. We are the capital of the startups followed by Munich and well they will put the money where the mouth is so uh, they will if when when they want to support the startups they want they need to support the first of all the startups where they are and many of them are in Berlin so I wouldn't worry about that and as now you can also see look at the uh, at the um, of the level of the distribution of governmental funds. Now, as we have a limited amount of automotive industry and companies who deliver to these companies, so you can see, you can state that the bulk of the support programs, which are already carried out so far, went to South Germany and other areas. And so it is only a question of justice that now when it comes to startups, now that is somehow reverted towards Berlin. So I wouldn't worry about that, that um, Berlin will take the bulk of these uh, support programs. Well, we sure hope so. But right now we're only talking about money coming from the national level. But would the EBB be able to top up this fund with money from the state of Berlin? Well, that has not been mentioned as a plan as yet, but you can, you, can, you can guess that the EBB Beteiligungsgesellschaft, we have a portfolio of 75 companies at the moment. And many of these companies would obviously also need some support now. So we will take in many cases mentioned a 30% stake and uh, to be complemented with the 70% provided by the, by the federal state. So we would take our share of responsibility and exposure. Mm -hmm. But if your question refers to the Land Berlin, um, well, Christian Herzog and, and me, we were joining at the conference last week with the, with the Secretary of State of the Land Berlin, and it became so, somehow clear or it was indicated that the Land Berlin will try to complement what is happening on the federal level. So the Berlin, so Land Berlin is already quite exposed with these support programs, with the programs uh, Raphael Kubel just uh, mentioned, the support program one and two, and has an exposure accumulated to exposure of several several hundred million euros. So Land Berlin will not uh, substitute or try to top the program which is now set up on the federal level. No, it will seek to complement it and to close gaps which the federal program will leave uh, here or there. And that was my understanding at the conference call last week 
uh, Christian, correct me if I'm wrong, is that they will focus on the early stage companies, which are maybe not in the central focus of the federal uh, government program. And these early stage companies is a very important clientele of the IBB, of the Invest Investitionsbank Berlin, and is uh, an important segment of the market in Berlin. And, um, and in case that it turns really out that the federal program leaves this segment out somehow or neglects it somehow, then Land Berlin will certainly try to close this gap. And that could happen through a deepening and enlarging of the Gründungs uh, bonus program or the uh, stipendian, Gründungsstipendien program. And I think through these instruments, we can uh, uh, are well designed to, to reach this, this segment of the market, which is maybe somehow underrepresented in the program of the federal state. Okay. Last but not least, can you take a look into the crystal ball for us and forecast when this fund is going to come into effect? Of the federal state, of the, of the, yeah, on, yeah. on the national level, federal state. Yeah, that, that is, uh, well, I think they understand that they have to hurry up if, um, because um, the capital ratios are, of the startups are not so comfortable in these days. So I think that is understood and uh, I spoke to them this morning. So I think they are really, really working on that. But of, of obviously, they always need a kind of consultation between various ministries and certainly also with the European Commission with regard to state aid. Okay. Dr. von Bismarck-Osten, thank you so much for being part of such a program like this call here. And thank you for sharing your insights. Now I would like to go to the second topic, which is all about legal issues with Dr. müller Borutau. At the beginning, we talked about liquidity problems. And in addition to contacting your house bank, you can also apply for tax referral, deferrals or deferrals of social security contributions. And here we have some latest news. Could you please explain this to us? Good afternoon, Mrs. Erdmann. Good afternoon to the audience. Um, yes, uh, that's probably one of the uh, easiest and fastest way to, to safeguard companies' money. If you uh, go to the tax authorities, uh, or if you write to the tax authorities and to the social security uh, authorities of the individual employees, uh, in order to get the allowance to postpone the uh, monthly payments, tax payments or uh, social security payments to the respective uh, authorities. And uh, this is with respect to the social security uh, contributions, uh, but limited till the end of April. So you can only uh, try to get a postponement, the allowance to postpone the social security uh, uh, contributions uh, only for, for April of this year, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Okay. And one of the major topics during the last weeks has been short time work. So can you explain briefly to us what that actually means? Short time work, uh, short time work, that's really the, the main instrument to, to try to get to the crisis. And uh, it means that um, in general, the employer is uh, uh, in charge to get enough workload uh, for his employees. But nowadays, uh, either by uh, regulations of the state or because of the customers do not uh, show up to the, to the employer and to the companies, um, the, the employer is not, uh, is not anymore and in, in, uh, it's not possible anymore for the employer to have this workload. And short, short time work and the short time money, uh, that's the way or that's the instrument how the uh, employer can avoid uh, to be obligated to, to pay the full salary to the employees. And uh, the requirements are that uh, 10%, at least 10% of the employees 
are uh, concerned by, by the uh, short-term work and at least 10% uh, of the uh, earnings of the employees uh, are, are concerned by the short-term work. And is it possible to vary the percentage of short-time work amongst the employees? Meaning, for example, I have two employees in 10% and others in 90. Is, is that possible? Theoretically, yes. But the uh, uh, most common uh, is it to show uh, which department, or what's the workload for the department in, in, the, in the next days or the next weeks. And uh, so... To, to determine it by, by employees, that, that's quite hard to, to show to the uh, unemployment authorities at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. And who is actually eligible for short-time work? Uh, the general rule is that everybody is eligible for whom contributions to the state employment authorities have been paid. That means, of course, the regular stuff, uh, irrespectively whether it's part-time or full-time, uh, is uh, eligible for, for short-time work, uh, but not, for example, uh, mini-jobber, work students or trainees, because the employer does not uh, deduct any uh, unemployment contributions uh, to the respective authorities. And what about the legal forms? Uh, are they all eligible for it? What about associations, social entrepreneurs, artists, and stuff like that? It's, it's not depending on the, on the legal form, uh, or each legal form, in the meaning of GmbH, uh, AG, KG, GGmbH, uh, everybody is, or each legal form is eligible for, for the, uh, the short-time work. Uh, social entrepreneurs, uh, as long as they have a company, they are eligible. Artists, uh, Probably not because they, they mostly they work as solo artists and uh, then they have, they have to apply for the other uh, remedies we discussed before. So it all depends on the social security contribution that you right. have done before. Okay. Right. So what is actually paid for and who pays for the short time work? We have two levels of, of um, uh, short time work payments. Uh, depending on the maintenance obligations of the individual employees. So the higher level is 76% uh, of the last income. Even when we're talking about a, a short-time work zero, so if, if, if there are no uh, employment pay, uh, salary payments by the employer. And the other level is 60% of the last income. Uh, if you are not married, uh, do, you do not have uh, children, then you only get uh, 60%. And what about social security contribution? Are these also covered by the Federal Office of Labor? Yes, they, they in this uh, period of time with the corona crisis, uh, the social, secu uh, social security contributions are fully covered by the unemployment authorities. Okay, and can the employer voluntarily top up the short-time work money? Uh, yes, he can. Uh, it's uh, quite common because, uh, as I mentioned before, the, uh, the employer needs the consent uh, of the employees that he pays only the, the, the short-time the, the, the short work payment to the employees and uh, therefore to convince them that they have no disadvantages uh, at, the end of the, uh, at, the, at the end of the month, most of the uh, uh, many employ, employee, employers uh, top up the short-time work money okay. to the reg, regular net salary. Okay, and how long can short-time work last? The legal frame is 12 months, but uh, I think that everybody hopes that he does not need uh, mm -hmm. for 12 months a short-time work. Yeah, we hope so too. Yeah. Uh, so what happens in the event of sickness during the short time work or if the employee was previously on sick leave? There you have to distinguish what's the reason uh, why the employee is not working. Is it the sickness or is it the short time work? So for example, if uh, it's short time work, short time work on Monday and Tuesday, uh, but the rest of the week it's a regular working uh, day, then the employee gets for the regular employee uh, regular working days uh, Wednesday to Friday uh, a continuous sick payment, and for for the other days he gets uh, a short time work payment, 
or if he was ill before the short time work starts, then he gets a statutory sick payment. But the, the, uh, the amount is the same, it's 76% uh, of the ne uh, last net salary. Mm -hmm. And Ed, where do I apply for short time work? Is it possible online, via post, email? How do I do that? You have to apply at the uh, st uh, state uh, unemployment authorities here in Berlin, uh, where the uh, uh, seat of your, your company is. And uh, as far as I see it, and I haven't uh, seen it and I haven't heard anything else, uh, you have to send it by post. By post, or uh, it, there's also an online format, right? Yes, but you have to. It, 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 it's it said on the on the form that uh, you have to fulfill this uh, formula uh, completely before you can print it. Ah, okay, okay. And which kind of documents do you need to apply? You need two applications. Uh, the first is the announcement that you uh, will implement short-time work, and the second one is that you apply for the uh, short-time work payment that you receive from the state authorities uh, and which you have to, you as the employer has to pay to the employees. Mm -hmm. And can you say anything about the processing time at the Federal Office of Labor? How long does it take? Well, I've, I've, I've often heard that they uh, want to speed up the process and uh, have uh, as well increased the workforce. Uh, but you have to calculate with 50 working days uh, till you get the, uh, uh, the answer. Mm -hmm. So we talked about now about the basic of uh, short time work, but these there are some things you need to consider before you apply for short time work. Uh, can you tell us what are the legal preconditions here? Yes. Um, this the unemployment authorities try in a friendly, friendly way to avoid the payment of short-time work. Um, and uh, therefore, they ask the employer that uh, the employees should take uh, annual leave, should take vacation, should use overtime accounts uh, before the employer uh, may ask uh, for, for the, uh, they may apply for the short-time work uh, payments. Uh, but according to the German Vacation Act or other acts, uh, it's not possible that the employer grants uh, the, the vacation to the employees without the consent of the employee. Uh, therefore, if you apply for the uh, um, short-term work payments by the state authorities, you had at least, at least to show that you tried to get rid of much as possible annual leave vacations. But if, at the end of the day, em employees still may have some, some vacation. Mm -hmm. Well, you mentioned the employment contract or a collective agreement that you need. Um, in case you do not have anything in your contract, what do you need to add? Is it a simple email or an amendment of the contract? What do you actually need? You, you have to, 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 to um, put some efforts on, on this issue because here in, in, in Berlin, Berlin, unfortunately, we have a very strong, strong jurisprudence with, uh, regarding the re valid requirements for Dutch an amendment to the contract. In other uh, countries, in Germany, there is maybe enough to have a, a, a one-pager, pa one something like this, saying the employer uh, may uh, uh, in, in, uh, invent the, the short-time work with a certain period of time. Uh, but here in Berlin, you have a, a, a very detailed amendment to the contract saying, when does a, a short-term work start? How long will it last? What does the employee get paid? Uh, what are the reasons uh, to, to uh, withdraw the short-term work again? Mm -hmm. And there are some latest developments when it comes to the submission of the employee's agreement to short-time work. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Uh, that's what the uh, uh, federal authorities, unemployment authorities uh, told, that, told us that um, generally you have to submit the uh, uh, collective bargaining agreement, the shop agreement, and also the employees' uh, agreements uh, with, the application, with the application. But now <clears throat> they have decided that you can uh, bring it, uh, you can send it 
after you have sent uh, the, the announcement of the uh, short-term work. Okay. And there's mm. another very important topic which a lot of people are affected by, the home office. Yeah. Um, is the employee obliged to do a home office upon the employer's request and vice versa? <laughs> Uh, here's the same applies with respect to the consent of the employee. So the employer, the employee is not obligated to work at home because uh, uh, it's his home, uh, his apartment, his is his, his square, and the employer has no influence on this. Uh, therefore, the employee and the employer have to agree to that the employee uh, uh, may work uh, in, a, in a home office. And the employer has to 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 stuff the uh, uh, home office with a computer, with a printer, with the internet, and something like this. At the moment, all schools and kindergartens are closed, which is a major problem for many parents working from home. Does an employee have any rights or claims when it comes to home office and the absence of childcare? <laughs> Uh, meanwhile, yes, uh, this was one major issue we discussed with our clients at the beginning of the uh, uh, of this crisis, uh, because uh, uh, according to the law, the employee, the employer, is not obligated to pay any salary to the employees if they do not work, and uh, uh, people at home, employees at home, uh, taking care of the children unless they work in the home office, <laughs> they do not uh, render services for the employer. Uh, but uh, beginning from the April 1st, uh, uh, the, the, the federal, uh, the Germany, the federal state uh, has enacted that uh, such employees are entitled at least to uh, 60, 76% uh, of uh, the last uh, net salary and uh, the employer <coughs> get reimbursed uh, by the uh, uh, finance uh, authorities here in Berlin. Uh, you just mentioned it. Where exactly can you apply for this compensation? Um, you have to go to the, uh, on, on the homepage of the uh, uh, finance, uh, of the Finanzsenator here in Berlin, and then you get the link uh, to, the, to the application form. Okay. And our last topic is rent payments. So what happens if the office building has been officially closed? Does the tenant still have to pay the rent? I think everybody uh, has heard about the uh, decision of Adidas uh, that uh, they do not want, or they didn't want uh, to, to pay uh, rent for, for, for the shops they have rented. And uh, they refer to, to one uh, new law which was enacted uh, and became effective as well as, uh, as well on, on April 1st, uh, that attendants uh, can postpone uh, the monthly rental payments uh, <coughs> till the end of June 2020, uh, 2022. Uh, but we talked about, uh, or the Raphael uh, talked about uh, cheaper ways to finance, uh, to get financial uh, support in this crisis. Uh, this is quite expensive for, for the tenants because they have to, to pay at about 8% interest on the, uh, <clears throat> on the rental payments they postpone to pay now. Mm -hmm. And since many startups are listening right now, what about co-working spaces? Many of the startups do not have a normal rent agreement with the um, co-working provider, but service contracts. What about this? Right, that, that's a big difference between the rental agreement and the, uh, the co-working space agreement, uh, because uh, when you, with the co-working space, you, you, you rent it uh, temporarily, but not permanent. Uh, and uh, if the uh, uh, provider cannot provide any more the, the space or otherwise or the other way around, uh, the, co uh, the, uh, the startup uh, has no need to get uh, to the offices, uh, then the startup is uh, not obligated to pay the, to pay the rent to the co-working space uh, companies. Okay. Dr. Müller-Bogutau, thank you so much for your expertise on all of these legal issues. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for your question. <laughs>
Probably many experts are listening to this call right now and therefore I would like to draw your attention to our Berlin Partner Initiative together with Rising Network, which is called Because Berlin, where we give out information on expert life in Berlin in English language. And especially now during the crisis, they provide assistance to all experts in Berlin and you can contact them via phone, via mail, or social media. Just check out their website, which is because.berlin. Well, and that's it from my side with the interviews, but I assume that we got a lot of questions in our live chat. Dear Karina, how does it look like? Yes, hi, Caroline. Thank you so much um, for, yeah for letting me take over now um, and thank you to everyone who sent me questions in the text. Um, I tried my best to um, answer at least to a couple of you um, with, a, with a direct answer and um, I would now like to post some questions to our experts and I would like to structure it in the same way as Carolyn did before. Um, so starting with you, Alexandra, are you ready for a question from the chat? Yes. Okay, um, <laughs> so we talked about the KFW's um, Corona loans for companies, but these uh, only take effect uh, when I have been active on the market for at least three years. What about startups that are younger than three years? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Oh yeah, it's a very good question. So um, as Dr. von bismarck Austin already mentioned, there are some regular programs that um, can be used by startups as for example, the Gründungsbonus or for um, entrepreneurs who are thinking about founding a company. There's for example, the Berlin Startup Stipendium. Um, uh, regarding the loans, as this was basically my part, the KFW loans, there's also a program that is called ERP Gründungskredit Startgeld. And um, startups and those in foundations as well as freelancers can apply for this program. And they receive up to 100,000 euros in promotional loans. And also here the KFW covers um, some of the credit risk. Here it's 80%, so uh, for small companies, not 90, but 80% and um, the term can be up to 10 years and apart from that the i think the same conditions as uh, mentioned before in the other programs as well as the uh, securities documents etc apply here mm -hmm. okay thank you so there is something and of course we will be happy to um, also publish this information or at least links to to the information after this call which is also recorded um, thank you, Alexander. My uh, next questions would be for Raphael Kube. Hello, okay. yeah. Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Um, so I have um, questions regarding the Fort if it's why uh, one more time for you. Um, maybe could you tell me if um, I as a company or a startup already applied for the Fort if it's why by the state of Berlin, but not for the support by the German government, meaning these 9,000 euros. Is it now possible for me to apply for, for the 9,000 euros? Um, there's no reason why you shouldn't be eligible for the, for the program in the past. So they're mainly the same, um, same regulations. Um, so it shouldn't be a problem as a startup to apply for for the for the um the fault if it's why in its new version um if you have operating costs if you, if you have um the the cost for your for your employees etc this is this is totally possible there's no no reason why you shouldn't be eligible for that program okay thank you very much um for clarifying for clarifying that and another question um could you please tell us if um private means or reserves have to be used before being eligible to apply for the Ford Hilfe? Um, yeah, as I, as I uh, mentioned, it's, it's, the program is um, for companies and people who has really um, existential issues. Um, if, if you have, just, just say it, just make it in black or white. If you have um, one million on your, on your bank account, and just your your business is not running well 
then of course you should you should use your 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 savings and and your private uh, liquidity because the program is really for for um company owners for entrepreneurs um that are that have really existential um um issues um because of the corona crisis mm -hmm. okay thank you and for those of you wondering um how like what you have to prove for example is there going to be an audit on how you spend the money do you have some more information for those um in the call so yeah yeah this this process isn't clarified yet but um you can make sure that um your finance art what is the english word for it um, um will will check this mm -hmm. okay. we'll just keep track on where you spend the money and uh, be ready for, for an audit that's the message right? yeah yeah okay. Thank you so much, Raphael. Um, that's it for now, also on the Forthilfe. And I would now like to get to Dr. Um, von Bismarck Austin. Would you be ready for two more questions? Three, actually. Yes, Hello. I'm ready. Perfect. Thank you so much. Um, so you already yeah gave us some information on this uh, or on what you know so far thank you so much um on this uh, new fund that is also going to be open to or that is mainly open for startups um do you know if the ibb bet will support startups in finding a potential private investor in order to apply for this new um startup support for example if, if um, if there is a startup that has not received any funding yet, but is was about to, um, is ready to receive funding, what is your opinion on that at the moment? So be, be sure that the EBB bet will be a very active player in this program, either as an institution which channels through the state aid, or as a co-financer of these other agencies so either or either we will be uh, the one who channels through the 70 percent of the state aid or we take a, our 30 percent stake jointly with a public sector entity and um, uh, and uh, both ends we will have a sharp eye on on companies in berlin in our portfolio but also beyond our portfolio so companies which are eligible for our um, for our for our uh, venture capital stakes and which convinces us on in terms of business model and so on and we will really seek not to leave uh, promising companies out mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. That is good to hear. Um, do you think that would also apply for um, very early stage startups, for example, those that well, may, that may be the extreme case that weren't even founded yet, or those that are, I don't know, maybe six months old that haven't made any prob uh, profit yet? What about those startups? Well, um, a public sector entity as the EBB cannot promise everything to everybody. Mm -hmm. um, the very earliest stage of companies which do not, who will still ventilate their ideas at their drawing board, they might still rely on their friends and family and angels. Mm -hmm. But those who are, have developed already um, a project which out uh, which uh, project and uh, and um, product sorry which without having received vc as yet should be eligible for gründungsbonus and other programs mm -hmm. and gründungsbonus is also very 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 early stage but yes. you need you need a concept of your product and you need a concept for of your first clients and even better, you had already contacts with them and even and, and sold already something to them. Mm -hmm. Yes, so the message is clearly to also take a look at what is um, out there for, for early stage startups when there's not the corona crisis in them. The, prob the problem is that you have to draw a line between what is corona related mm -hmm. and, and uh, what is 
normal early stage risk. Yeah. yeah. So it is has always been difficult to find investors to to convince investors and to have your first financing round. And obviously the federal state and also Berlin cannot now because we have corona take on all these risks the startup related risk on their shoulder now because we have corona but it having said that it is obviously very difficult to draw this line because well pockets are increasingly closed now of of venture capitalists and so and and, and of angels it is very difficult to draw this line and we will handle that in a, in a general in a, in a generous way Mm -hmm. But nevertheless, startup risks are inherent, and we have to keep these two problems, normal startup risks and corona related problems, a bit apart. Yes, yes. Well, yeah, thank you for, for clarifying. And um, yes, we can only um, encourage everyone who's early stage to really take a look at. Um, at the normal early stage startup programs and uh, yeah. to apply for them. Yes. Thank you so much, um, Dr. Bismarck uh, from Bismarck Austin. Um, this was my last question for you. And now, Dr. Müller Borutau, I have uh, two more questions for you. Okay, very good. I'm still here. Perfect. Um, so maybe um, you can you can clarify that. Um, do you know? Um, if a company, um, sorry, yeah, if a company wants to get to uh, short time work, do they have to make sure that employees um, take all their overtime hours and all the vacation days um, they have throughout one year um, before they go into short time work? Um, the employer has to try to grant as much vacation and uh, 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 as much vacation before he applies to, to, to the uh, short-term work payment. But the employer can need the consent of the employee uh, that he is allowed to grant the vacation. Therefore, if the employees refuse to accept vacation, then the employer has done everything he has to do before he applies for, for the short-term work pa uh, payment. Mm -hmm. So there is no obligation that the vacation accounts are zero and the overtime accounts are zero before you uh, apply for the short time work. Mm -hmm. But indeed, you have to try and to talk to the employees that they accept to go on vacation. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you sir, so much for clarifying that. And um, could you tell me if, um, w do you know if it's possible for a company to register for to for short time work if they think they might need it, but in the end, um, yeah, they're just not gonna need it. Do they have to prove um, that they actually made use of it? Are there gonna be any consequences if they do not? Yes, they can uh, apply for short term work payments because they have to predict the workload within a time frame of uh, one month or two months. And uh, if, if they are lucky and uh, they get more customers, or the the uh, then the, the, the they won't get paid the uh, the, the short-term work payment, or they have to pay pay it back to the unemployment authorities. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, thank you, thank you so much. That actually was already my um, last question for you. Um, I also saw that many of you in parallel sent me uh, questions um, via the chat. Unfortunately, I was not, my multitasking uh, skills were not so advanced to actually follow that in parallel. Um, just to let everyone know who's still on the call, if you have questions, visa related questions, work permit uh, questions, um, during this crisis, you're of course always free to reach out to Berlin Partner. We have an excellent business immigration team um, who can are still able to to follow this job at the moment. So just take a look at the um, Berlin Partner um, website and uh, search for our talent service. And um, yeah, we will try our best to find a solution for you if you have any trouble with that at the moment. Um, so yes, um, that's it from my side um, at the moment. And I think 
Time-wise, we're um, quite good. I would like to thank um, all our experts, Alexandra Grafweiner, Raphael Kube, Dr. Matthias von Bismarck Osten and Dr. Dietmar Müller Borutau for taking the time today and uh, especially at this time of the day um, and for answering all the questions. I really hope that um, yeah, our audience and, yeah, was uh, happy with the answers and of course we also try to address um, all remaining questions, see if we can publish some more answers and links. And of course, this uh, call was also recorded, so we will publish um, it also tomorrow morning latest. Um, yes. And with that, I would like to close. Thank you all so much.